Hey guys, hopefully this will be the final installment on the Filco 077 signal generator. In the last installment it seemed to be fully operational, but I still had a few things to do. One of them was install the output attenuator. I had been looking at just the wide open output picked off at this point. So I uh, went ahead and cleaned that up. I did put the output level attenuator back together. Uh, I'm pretty confident that it's going to work fine. Uh, it has very smooth action. Uh, don't seem to be any dead spots. I think I'm all right with that. I cleaned up and lubed the switch. I replaced the one wire that was kind of frayed. So I think that is good. I want to address a couple comments I got. One was about the waveform kind of bouncing at the end. That was when I was at the highest frequency range, the one that goes up to 35 megahertz. Well, a couple reasons for that. One, you may have noticed as I went through the various frequency bands, as the frequency got higher, the amplitude dropped. Because there's no output amplifier on this. There's no buffer amplifier. And that's typical of oscillator circuits. Is the higher the frequency, the, uh, the lower the output. Um... So, what that means is, as I was going up the higher frequencies, I was increasing the gain on the scope because the signal amplitude I was measuring was getting smaller and smaller. So what? What does that mean? Well, the lower the output that the circuit's generating, the more noticeable noise is. There's always noise. There's always noise floating around in the... Uh, in the ether, so to speak, <laughs> just radiating from everything, from these lights, the house wiring, radio stations, there's just a lot of RF stuff going all over, and of course the 60 hertz hum that's just kind of ever present in this, uh, in this country. So, I have this thing opened up. The entire cabinet is metal. That serves as shielding, as does the shielded cable. So I was just picking off the signal here. So it was, in other words, it was exposed to the environment. So it's going to pick up some noise there, including from the power cord, which I just have lying here. Now, and this is all back together. We not only have the grounded, shielded cabinet, but also the power line will be routed off this way. And there's also a power line filter, which I'm currently bypassing. So... I think that accounts for the bouncing on the waveform. So I think that was 60 hertz being superimposed on top of the RF that was being picked up because of lack of shielding. The other point that was uh, mentioned was about the location of the power switch. So let's take a look at the schematic. So here's where the power comes in. And here's the power line filter. Switch is way over here. He suggested that the power switch should be located over here. And yeah, that does make sense. Except for one thing. Uh, these two coils and these two caps are on the other part of the cabinet. This is the face. The body of it has half of that line filter. Power switch is over here. So I would have to run a line directly from the AC input, bypass the line filter, come over to the switch, and then run a line back over to the line filter, and then back over here. I could do that. Uh, I'm inclined not to, though. Partly because I want to preserve the originality of this as much as possible. This is not a precision, laboratory-grade piece of equipment. Uh, so I'm not really worried about that. Safety, eh. Uh, that's a topic for another video, perhaps. I don't have a definitive answer about what I'm getting at is having components always on the AC line when the device is plugged in. These capacitors I used are rated for that type of operation. But you, generally speaking, yeah, it's nice to not have any type of load or anything on the AC line at all times if you can avoid it. I know some guys talk about they unplug their stuff. They unplug, just unplug their old radios. 
entirely, or put them in a switch, which is actually how most of my stuff is in here. I, uh, I have power strips like this, and I turn them off. So it does, that's another reason why I don't care so much, is um, I kill the power to the uh, to the outlets in here, so it doesn't I don't really necessarily rely on the power switch and the devices themselves. And uh, one final point is it has an unpolarized plug. I potentially could use a polarized, except remember it's got that AC interlock in the cabinet, and that is not polarized, and I do not want to replace that, again, to preserve the originality. So, knowing how I'm going to be using it, which isn't very much, um, I'm not particularly concerned about those safety aspects of it. And as far as where to put a fuse in this, again, if you put a fuse right up here, it would protect everything. Whereas if I put a fuse over here, these could still be an issue. But then again, these capacitors are designed specifically to be on the AC line. And if there's some kind of lightning strike or surge, they're designed to fail safely so they won't short out, catch fire, etc. So... Again, I'm not that concerned about where exactly the fuse is located. I'm doing a power-up test now to make sure that the attenuator is working right. And at first, I was surprised at how low the output level is. So I'm in the hijack. When you're in the hijack, the level switch has no effect. The only thing that's affecting it is the output attenuator control. So I've got the high level output with maximum output level on the variable control and we're sitting at about 100 millivolts peak to peak which is way 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 less than what I was measuring previously. And I at first was thinking, ah, oh, something doesn't seem right, maybe something's partially shorted, it's killing the signal level. And I took a look at the schematic again. So previously when I was checking this, I didn't have that attenuator hooked up, which is a 250 ohm variable resistor going from uh, essentially the output of the generator to ground. Now the output of the generator, or oscillator, goes through a 45,000 ohm resistor, or in my case I used a 47,000 ohm resistor. So, think about it. The signals coming out of the oscillator going through a large resistor in series with a small resistor going to ground, that forms a voltage divider. That's going to cut the signal down considerably. That's a ratio of more than uh, what, uh, 100 to 1. So, yeah, you get a very low output level. So this is the maximum it's going to put out. This is on the lower frequency band. At a higher frequency band, it's going to get smaller and, and smaller. So, why? Why would you want such a small output level? Because this is meant for really only one purpose, and that is aligning radios, which have a lot of gain. They're picking a sig uh, signal out of the air in microvolts, way less than that. So what you would more typically do is use the medium output level jack. And that, depending on the range switch, can cut it down by a further factor of 1,000 and, and the variable control. So you're looking at really low level signals, this is meant to put to the antenna input of a radio, which may very well have a gain of, I don't know, 10,000, 100,000, a million, before you get to the, from between the antenna and the speaker. So, I don't even see a signal anymore. I'll increase the gain on the scope. So, you know, this, is, this is as much a gain as I can get out of the scope. 10 millivolts per division. I don't even see anything anymore. I'm just kind of seeing something on the highest output level. So, <laughs> you can't even really tell if this is working uh, at this point unless I increase uh, the gain some more. So when I go through the calibration procedure you actually use a radio such as that. 
So, uh, briefly, um, there are several ways you could calibrate this. Uh, there's a frequency cutter built into this scope. I could go before the attenuator where I have a much larger signal like we I did earlier, but this is not the most accurate frequency counter. It's good to probably, uh, I don't know, 100 hertz plus or minus, something like that. And then there's this guy, which is a dedicated frequency counter. Far more accurate, assuming it's calibrated. I could use this, but I'd have to, again, dig into this probably maybe on the high level on the most sensitive input of this that might be able to read it or we can do what they outline in the procedure in here which is to use a radio essentially what you do is tune your AM radio to a, a local station say AM 720 dial this to AM720 on that dial and then tweak the trimmer capacitor for that band until you start hearing a whistle and then silence. That's when the two are exactly the same. Idea being that the broadcast station has a very, very accurate frequency and this being closer to the radio even though it's a low-level output, is going to be more powerful than the broadcast signal. So this will null it out. So when the two frequencies are exactly the same, this will override the broadcast frequency and you won't hear anything. Or if I put the 400 hertz uh, modulation on this, I think we might hear 400 hertz. Or it might still be null. It's been a while since I've done this. don't remember exactly, but we'll be doing it with the modulation off anyways. That's why I prefer to do this. In fact, I think in the 10 plus years of me doing YouTube videos, you've never seen me use a dedicated frequency counter. I think this is a much more interesting way to calibrate a signal generator uh, to do it uh, to do to null out a broadcast station, and you can do it our harmonics too for the higher frequency bands. Before we get into calibration, I wanted to talk about a few more things. I just remembered I got another comment about replacing these mini BNC output connectors with something like a uh, more modern BNC connector that's very standard on test equipment these days, like this frequency counter and scope have. I could. That's a very common modification of vintage test equipment because uh, you really... Uh, they don't make cables like this anymore, so you got to get creative, make your own, adapt. I think this is actually from a voltmeter, but it fits in there pretty well. Uh, no, I'm not going to replace these. Reason being that uh, I know how I'm going to use it and my intent with this project. Uh, I will be using this on some upcoming projects, but it is not going to be my go-to lab-grade piece of test equipment. I've got some other RF generators I'll show you in a bit that I use on a daily basis. This being a, a so original, I don't want to take that away from it. They're not super rare, it's not super valuable, but since it's all there, I don't want to modify it. Um, another thing I wanted to mention about the output is I mentioned a few times about the output impedance on this being kind of unknown or variable that's not true, I actually read the manual shockingly I, <laughs> I went ahead and read the description and that is not what they say now it is true if you use the high output which is just going right off the oscillator through a resistor through variable attenuator and then the output. However, the medium jack goes through a complicated network of resistors. That, they say, is a fixed output impedance of 100 ohms. Not a standard value, but I was interested in them, that it is a constant output impedance. wanted to correct myself on that. Uh, now, right now I've got the output on the high level, turn up as much as it'll go, go into my scope, and I got it in frequency mode. 
I wanted to see if I can dial this thing into 455. Now the problem is, with such a low level signal, you get noise jumping all over like crazy. Which makes things a bit difficult. Now one thing I can do with this is turn on bandwidth limiting. Which, unfortunately, didn't really help in this case. Maybe a little bit. That reduces the bandwidth of the input, which can potentially cut down noise. But seeing as this is low, low, such a low-level signal, it's only not helping so much. So you certainly wouldn't want to try calibrating off of this. It's way too jittery. Now if I go back further into this, where there's a higher-level signal available, I could. Which is yet another comment I received about modifying this, yet another modification, which is to put a BNC, say, in the back of it, tapping in to the higher level signal, the signal on the other side of that 47K resistor. So be right in here. And then go into a frequency counter, like such. So if I was going to use this on my lab, like every day, that would be a very good mod to make because yeah you can calibrate this and you've got the dial to look at but unless you want to go through the calibration procedure say every day with the radio to make sure it's dead on it's a lot easier just to look at a digital display and say yes give yourself some reassurance that it is calibrated correctly and still working uh, as it should be However, I'm not going to do that, <laughs> again, because I don't want to modify this. Uh, but let's see what the frequency counter can tell us. Uh, again, going from the output. So, uh, something else worth noting about this. If you pick off any of these signals up here, they have DC on them. This is not capacitively coupled. And they say in the instructions when you're using this thing, when you go to like the antenna and put on a radio to couple it with a capacitor. And so I've got one here going to my signal generator. The scope, the scope can handle AC and DC. It's meant for that. But uh, if you're not sure about what you're hooking this up to, definitely use a resistor in series with it. So I'm going to pop this out and take this. It's kind of Got a fat enough lead, I think I can just kind of stick it in there. And it's also a little bit jittery. And I think it is because of a little signal. This also has a filter, we can put that on. And why? That, that definitely helps out considerably. So turn this up a little bit. Let's see if we can get 455. Let's see how stable this thing is. Very touchy. I'm just barely putting any pressure on the knob. Wow, that, uh, that's pretty stable. Cool. Alright, so I'm satisfied that this is all working as it should be. So, next step, disconnect everything and tie it back into the AC line filter here. These wires, and notice there are holes in the back of the cabinet. That corresponds to the calibration trimmer caps. In other words, this is meant to be calibrated when it's all back together, not when it's out in the open like this. That'll take into account any uh, effect a stray capacitance has once this is back in here because grounded surface, you've got components in here, this is going to have a subtle effect on the inductors and capacitors when it's all back together. So you don't want to calibrate it when it's all taken apart like this. One last thing I want to do before I put it back together is install a fuse. So I was thinking about, well, where's the best place to put it? Well, here is the second line filter cap, and there's the power switch, and we've got a wire right here. The other wire, uh, two wires here, that's the primary, these yellowish wires. One's going to the other AC line capacitor, and one goes to the switch. So if I take out that red wire and put a pigtail fuse in there, seems like a really convenient place to put it. 
Yeah, I could drill a hole in the back of the cabinet and put one of those fuse holders on where you can unscrew and replace the fuse. But, again, I want to preserve the original look of this. And I'm kind of of the mind that fuses aren't meant to be replaced. <laughs> uh, if the fuse blows, it's because there's something wrong, and you should really open it up and take a look and see what's going on inside. Anyways, as far as the size goes, I think this is a 1 amp slow blow. Or, no, it's a half amp. That should be sufficient. This thing is, is quite low power. There's only two tubes in it, after all, in the rectifier tube. So I think a half amp slow blow should work out well. And so on the schematic, that is here. So it's right next to the switch. Uh, so, yeah, that will be that. And then uh, I just went to Home Improvement Center and got some of these push-on spade terminals. I think that will do for the uh, AC line cord. Here is the fuse, and I just married the two halves together. I am curious how they did this in the factory back in the day, because it is an awkward thing. I did not reuse the original wires, which were a little short and a little crusty. Instead, I took a length of line cord and went from that to that. So, time to flip this around and put it down, and uh, make sure this thing still works. I've got the generator all back together and powered up. I stuck uh, an output lead into the high output, got the level up all the way, and I fired up one of my period uh, Philco radios that would have been used with a generator like this. And I've got the antenna from the radio lying near the output of the generator. And I've got the radio tuned to AM820, and i got the generator about in the same area, and you see as I tune the generator, kind of wipe out the radio station. So, the idea is when the frequencies get close, they start mixing with each other and you hear that whistling sound. And when it's, you hear a dead silence, that's when they are exactly the same. And I'm pretty sure you should do this with modulation off, which is what I've got right now. Or actually what I should be doing is put the dial on AM820, or, or 820 kilocycles, I should say. And then adjust the trimmer in the back. So let's see. About there. Alright, right there. And now there are all these trimmers in the back. So we need a tool like this. Plastic with a slot on the end. And I got a get in there and make sure I get the right coil and tweak it until we don't hear the radio station anymore. So, excuse me while I poke around and make sure I get the right coil. Luckily there is a diagram in the surface info that shows you, so it looks like the B scale is the topmost one. So that should be this guy here. There we go. So, whistling to either side. That should be done on eight twenty. So that's the idea, and then you can do the same thing with harmonics to do the other bands. I was just editing the video and I realized I made a couple mistakes. So I'd like to correct those now. You use a capacitor in series with the output of this, not a resistor. You use a capacitor to block the DC so it doesn't go into whatever you are aligning, for example, a radio. Also, when I was calibrating this, I was not adjusting coils in the back, I was adjusting trimmer capacitors. Alright, now I also mentioned that as cool as this is, it is not something that I will be using 
day in and day out on my projects. I've got these more modern generators I uh, use on a regular basis. I've done videos on both of these a few years ago back when I got them. This is a Hewlett Packard 336A synthesized level generator. This will do up to 21 megahertz and it will do a sweep. So if you pair this up with an oscilloscope, you can actually see the frequency response of, say, the AM or FM radio you're working on. Well, it's still not high enough frequency for the TV work that I do. So I got this guy, which is a Hewlett Packard 8657A, which will go up to just slightly over 1 gigahertz. So these, you just turn them on, type in 455 kilohertz, set your output level, and you're good. Yeah, they also cost a few bucks, but I figure with the amount of um, projects I do, uh, I needed to invest the money in something that I knew was fully functional and calibrated to help me, well, <laughs> restore and calibrate the vintage stuff. So certainly you don't need this to align a radio. It's overkill from just about everything that I work on, but I, I had the means to get it, so I splurged a little. Another interesting thing you can do, apparently this radio isn't shield as well as it could be, or some signal just leaks through, but you can get the 455 IF frequency, and you can hear that coming through too, which is a dial center on 455. That doesn't have to be left to opinion. The science and the math backs it up. What about, the people out there, what about the people that it took how many days to get off that Princess cruise ship on Cal in California? Yeah. So that's the idea, is that if you've got a radio that you know is working well, uh, and you, you can tune into a station and you know you're dead on the station, you can feed the output of this in, and when the two coincide, you don't hear the whistling anymore. That's the gist of how you calibrate one of these. So, uh, that is going to be it for the Philco 077 signal generator. I hope you enjoyed this series, which turned out to be way longer than I expected it. Oh, and if you're wondering, that is how the AC line ended up being. So just two push-on terminals going to an AC line. And I will try to replace the handle, but I think to do that I'll have to drill out these rivets to uh, get a new one on there. And now... Coming up, we've got another project, and we're going to use this, hopefully, to align a radio.